adding LTE to your Hack5 Pineapple for completely out of band exfil, this time on Hack5. Hey everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Hack5. Please excuse the slightly awkward recording situation. We're in the ambulance. Oh yeah, I have an ambulance now. Uh, on the beautiful San Juan Islands uh, up in Washington State. And I've been working on this project with uh, Dragorn and Mark and some other Hack5 people to get LTE working on the Mark 7, much in the way it worked on the Mark 5. Quite a lot's changed, but I think we have it nailed down in the latest beta. Uh, Y'all know I've been working with LTE for a while, and I've kind of gotten an interest in adding it to a variety of things. Part of that's out of necessity, being so mobile and on the road all the time means cellular is my best bet until things like Starlink, you know, go fully mobile, which they kind of have. Anyway, that's off subject. But yeah, we have LTE working, and I'm going to show you how you can enable it on your Mark 7. This uh, walkthrough guide is still in its rough stages, and things are probably subject to change, but uh, it assumes a couple of things, that you're using a Quectel modem, in particular, I'm using an EC25 module. Uh, this is like a random, no case, you know, mod it, do whatever you want with it, because we're going to be doing some fun things with this in the future. Uh, but in theory, any EC25, EC20, anything Quectel that will work with QMI utils will work with this specific uh, walkthrough. Uh, I think Alpha makes a tube if you want something that's really high power. Uh, the tube U4G V2 or something like that that uses a Quectel as well. Uh, I'll have links to this modem and the alpha one I mentioned in, down below, as well as all the commands we're going to use. The only other assumptions we're going to make is that your pineapple is on the latest uh, beta 2.0 version, and you can do that by going over to advanced, setting your update channel to beta, going back to settings, and doing a normal software update. You'll want to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi for this setup process, and then you've also synced your uh, time to your browser because OPackage won't play happy. Anyway, let's dig right into it. We're going to need to open up a PuTTY session or whatever uh, SSH you know tool you use, and SSH into the Pineapple, and we're going to start by running OPackage update, and then we're going to install our dependencies. Now, for this, we need KMOD USB Serial, KMOD USB Serial WAN, uh, KMOD USB Serial Net, QMI WAN, and K, uh, QMI Utils. Now, we were discussing packaging these in the firmware update. However, QMI Utils alone is like 80 megs, and that would just balloon the size of the firmware uh, for something that the vast majority of users aren't probably going to play with. We might look into, I say we, I, uh, the community, uh, hopefully we can figure out how to make this into a module so that you don't need to do any of the SSH stuff uh, and it'll just be accessible. You know, you install a mod as you do and you install the dependencies and you can configure uh, all your APN and everything. But we're going to look at that going forward. Uh, next, we're going to do this command, which basically just tells the modem to go down and uh, uh, set it into a raw IP status because the way the modem communicates with the cell towers, it's just sending raw packets, you know, it's not trying to do any kind of light link layer, layer seven, you know, nonsense. Uh, that also then brings the, oh, interesting. Uh, it'd help if I had the modem plugged in, huh? And that looks like it worked. And then we're going to do this last command uh, you might need some more variables to this if you, if the cell service you're using requires a username or password. You can look at the QMI utils docs and it tells you exactly what you need to do. However, for my, uh, I'm just using an AT&T prepaid modem tablet sim. And all I need to do is add my APN, which is next gen phone. Hit enter. And it will... Uh, do everything it needs to do. IF config wwn zero, and that will give me an IP address, and we're connected. That's all it takes to get your pineapple on LTE. Now, the awesome part about this is it was, you know, there were firewall rules, there was some other configuration that needed done, uh, packet routing, but Dragorn and Mark worked really hard to get everything packaged into a nice, neat 
it just works after you install this. So in theory, you don't need to do anything else. This is it. Now, if I go through and uh, just real quick, we're going to ping tack i. That selects our interface, uh, 8.8.8. Cool, that confirms it's working. Now I'm going to run over here real quick and go to speedtest.net. Hit go. And in my experience so far playing with this, uh, I've been using it on and off for like the past week. It works just as well as using the uh, Glynet Muddy we've modded and played with so much in the past. Now, this one obviously doesn't have the uh, antennas on the top. And this is just using a sticker antenna, the little included modem antenna that you're supposed to stick on to whatever device you install it into. This isn't using a SMA or a UFL adapter to use a proper antenna. I'm inside a metal box on the fringes of our cell towers on the San Juan Islands, which if you know anything about the San Juan Islands, cell service up here is notoriously bad due to everything from the water and all of the trees and foliage around. And look at that. 33 milliseconds ping, and all of that going through the pineapple. In my experience with the Mark V, there was some network stack weirdness, and you could never get a super consistent usable connection. This is usable. I was using this for uh, several days this week, just on the pineapple connected to my computer. Now, that's not the most practical thing. Like I said in the beginning, you can use this to exfil data. You can use this... Uh, to put a pineapple somewhere that, you know, it might be a hostile network for a totally legit red team operation. Maybe you could use a drone and drop it on top of a truck and we'll, we'll get into that into the future. But right now, I just wanted to show you this is the dead nuts simple way to get LTE on your mode or on your pineapple. The only reason I'm not daily driving this compared to my Glynet Muddy is because it has built-in battery and is USB charge. It's super convenient and easy to use. But maybe, just maybe, we can do something to the pineapple to uh, get it on par with that. We'll look at that in future videos. In the next few videos, we're going to be finishing up the DIY drone series. I just wanted to show this to you all because I'm really happy we got it working and fully functional uh, but yeah, we're going to finish up the DIY drone series, and then we're going to get back to the pineapple uh, mods. I've got a lot in store for the Mark 7. Now that we've got LTE working, it just opens up a whole world of possibilities. Also, be sure to check out the 5 gigahertz module that was recently released. This thing's awesome. I should be getting one soon to play with, and uh, that too will be going into the various mods we're going to do. So make sure to stick around. I've got a lot in store for you all. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org. I hope they aren't alarmed by the fact that I said I'm in the back of an ambulance on the San Juan Islands. I mean, obviously I'm fine. I'm sitting here talking to them, so...